what's up guys welcome to another blender tutorial today i'm going to be showing you how to recreate this render and as you can see it's one of those animations where if you stare at dead at the center for long enough and then turn your head away from the screen it actually distorts the world around you kind of frazzles your brain a bit and recreates that distortion effect you get from psychedelics it's actually a really simple render to pull off and it's really easy on your computer's resources as well so if you are running a humble setup you're gonna have no issues rendering out this animation at all and as always if you make it to the end of the tutorial feel free to tag me in your renders. That's at Nebmotion. I'll be leaving the handle down below. I love seeing what you guys come up with from the tools I'm putting out. Anyway, on with the tutorial. Right, so once you've got Blender open, first thing we're gonna do is just delete everything, start fresh. So hit A, X, and delete. Start with a fresh scene. We're gonna hit Shift A, add a mesh, and let's add a UV sphere. Now hit S and then eight, let's scale that sphere up. And the first thing we're gonna do is come to the modifier settings here this little spanner, we're gonna add a modifier and we're just gonna add a subsurface modifier. Now with that added, just come to object here and select shade smooth. Now you've got a nice smooth ball here. Great, let's add our camera back now. So hit shift A, we'll add a camera and you'll see that's inside the sphere. So we just wanna reset the rotation of this now. So hit Alt R, that will reset the rotation. Great, now hit G, Z, eight, and that's gonna bring the camera right to the top of the sphere, see? The reason why we set the camera to the top of the sphere is just so we can get as much of the inside of the sphere in frame as possible. Great, so now that that's done, let's jump into render mode. So hit Z and then an 8. That's going to take you into render mode and now we can start shading the object. We're going to come to the world settings here. We're going to change the color to black. Now hit 0 to go into camera mode. Turn our overlays off and we're going to click on the sphere and just bring your mouse to the top corner here and just click and drag it in so we can get a new window. We're gonna change this editor type to shader editor and just hit N to get rid of that. We're gonna add a new material. We're just gonna delete this principal BSDF. We don't need that. We're gonna change that to an emission shader. So hit shift A, add shader, let's add an emission. Pop that there and plug the emission into the material output. And we'll set the strength to about eight. Now hit shift A, come to converter and add a color ramp. We'll pop that there and just plug that straight into the emission. Now hit shift A again. We're going to go to texture and we're going to add a wave texture and just pop that there and plug the fac into the fac of the color ramp. So this wave texture is going to basically generate some patterns on our sphere and we're going to use this color ramp, just bring this black dial in just so we can sort of crunch in the colors together. Now we're going to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate and before we do that, in case you haven't already, I advise you to come to edit preferences and we're going to install an add-on called Node Wrangler. This is just a really handy add-on to have installed. It basically enables a bunch of shortcuts within this node editor, just makes working in there much easier. So yeah, just all you need to do is make sure that's checked. And with that installed, we're going to click on the wave texture and we're going to hit Control T and I want you to make sure that you have generated plugged into the vector. Now we're going to set the rotation on the y-axis to 90 degrees so we can see the patterns like that. Great, so with that done, Let's just bring this in a bit so we can get a better view. We're going to go to our camera, come to the camera settings here. So click on your camera, go to the camera settings and let's drop the focal length down to about 11. Now click back on your sphere and we're going to animate the mapping nodes of this wave texture to create some really interesting sort of effects like that. So just come down here, drag up your timeline. We're going to make this a five second loop. So change this to 120. Now usually when I make perfect loops, I like to use the rotation parameter, but it doesn't actually move the texture in the way I want to. Uh, the way I want to move it, I actually have to use the location values. So it can be quite hard to set it to loop seamlessly. So if you want, you can just copy my settings, but I'll show you the method that I use to get this done. So, so the key is to animate it so that the start frame and the end frame have this ring in exactly the same position. And that can be quite hard when you're using the location parameter. So here's the way I do it. I'm going to turn my overlays on and I'm going to add an empty. So I'm going to hit shift A, just to add an empty or add an empty cube. Now just scale that cube up until you see the top of the cube perfectly aligns with the top of the ring. This is going to be our reference point. Now, when you click off the sphere, it's going to be very hard to see the empty. So we're going to go back to the shader settings. I'm going to click on this white bit. I'm going to click on this black dial and I'm just going to bring this up a bit. Now we can see our reference again. We'll go back to the mapping node. On the first frame, hover your mouse over the X on the location. We're gonna hit I on our keyboard. That's gonna add a frame. 
Now we're going to come to frame 121. And the reason why we said it's 121 instead of 120 is so that we avoid a duplicate frame, which will basically make it look like your render is glitching when you loop it. So yeah, just make sure it's set to 121. And now we're going to hold shift and we're going to push this X axis up. Yeah. Just keep pushing it up and just look for the ring to hit your reference point. So there, I think about 0.88 is perfect. So now hit I again on that X parameter and it's added a keyframe. And like I said, this step is a bit finicky. So feel free to copy my settings here. So we've got 0.88 on the X axis on your last frame. And it's just zero on the first frame. It's important if you are copying mine that the, all these wave texture settings are the same as well. Because once you start adjusting the scale, it's going to affect the position of your wave. So just make sure if you are copying me, you copy everything to the T. So yeah, now that we've got that keyed in, let's just hit play. And you'll notice the animation actually accelerates and decelerates as it comes to start and end. That can be handy sometimes, but in this case, we want to change that. So, so hover your mouse inside your timeline, hit A and then T, and change this to linear, and that should fix that. Let's change that back to black now. And we're going to turn our overlays off again. Cool. That's looking good. Now that looks really cool, but in order to actually achieve that effect on the viewer that will distort their vision as they stare at it for long enough, you actually need to have another texture inside it that's going the opposite direction. I don't actually know the science behind it and why it sort of scats your brain out like that, but I think it has something to do with the way your brain perceives motion. And when you have two different sort of frames of motion going in opposite direction, your brain sort of adapts to the motion that your eyes are perceiving and once you take that away, i.e. look away from the screen, it takes a while for your brain to sort of adjust. Like I'm not I'm not a neuroscientist, but it's probably something to do with that. But anyway, how do you achieve that in Blender? Well, I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna turn our overlays on again and we're just gonna come out of render mode. So hit Z and then six. Let's come out of render mode. Come out of camera mode as well. We need to go to the bottom of our sphere. Go to the bottom where the camera is facing. So you want the camera to be facing this point so it's under the sphere. Click on your sphere, go into edit mode and we're going to go to face select and just click out of the sphere. We're going to hit C on the keyboard. I don't know what this tool is called but we're going to use it to select all of these faces. Just hold the click button and just drag it around and we'll drag it to about, let's drag all of the ones that are visibly under the sphere. And if you, if you click on too many, you can just hit the middle mouse button to deselect it. Or I think you can hit shift and click as well, either way. So with all those selected, we're going to hit escape on the keyboard. That's going to take you out of that tool. We're going to go to these material properties here. You need to stay in edit mode while you're doing this. So we're going to add a new material slot. We're going to come to this little thing here and we're going to assign it the same material. Just select the material that you made earlier and we're going to click this thing here and that's going to basically and that's basically going to allow you to edit this one without it affecting the one that you've just applied to the sphere so now all you've got to do is come here and hit assign and that's going to assign a new copy of that material to just these faces that you have selected so now we can come out of edit mode and just hit zero and we'll go back into render mode to hit z and then eight and now as you see if i select material two if I change the color, it's just going to change the color of those ones in the middle, see? But we're not going to do it like that. We are just going to simply swap these keyframes around, okay? So first of all, go to material one. Make sure you click out of the mapping node, otherwise your keyframes are going to be selected. So go onto material one, click anywhere on the shader editor that isn't on a node. Go to material two, click on your mapping nodes and the keyframe should pop up. Now we're just gonna swap these keyframes around. So hit G, pop that there and just swap these around you so they're going the opposite direction. And now hit play and let's put our overlays off. And that's literally all there is to it guys. All you gotta do is just render out the animation now. And if you stare at that for long enough, I guarantee you it's going to frazzle your brain a bit. You can also add a touch of distortion on the wave texture on the second material. Just a touch, not too much. And it actually exaggerates the effects of it of the optical illusion. Definitely something to consider when you're making this. You don't want to overdo it though, just a touch works great. So how do we render the animation then? All you've got to do is just come to your output properties. Change this output to somewhere you can find it. That's where the render is going to come out. Change the file format to FFmpeg video. We'll change the container to MP4. Set the output quality 
to perceptually lossless. And one more thing, just make sure you're doing this in Eevee. That's the uh, render engine we're gonna be using. And now all you gotta do is come to render and hit render animation and you're done. Right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And don't forget to tag me in your renders as well. I'll be leaving my handle down below. Tag me on Instagram, that's at Nedmotion. I'd love to see what you guys come up with from the tutorials I'm putting out. And I hope you feel like you've got something that you can show off to your friends now. I think this is a really cool effect. Like I said, I don't know the science behind it, but it does work and it's really cool as well. As always, I'll be leaving a link to the project file in the description below. Or you can find that on my website where you can find all my other work. That's nedmotion.co.uk.